Good morning and welcome to RUCC's Virtual Worship. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. And it seems even more important to say that these days than ever before. I do hope that you will find a spiritual solace this morning and a place that you can call home. Won't you pray this opening prayer with me? Abundant God, who has created enough for every single one of us, we greet you now. Hold us close and let us feel your presence in the strange season where we are split apart from one another, both physically and emotionally, as we head through a trying, trying time in our nation. Let us be reminded of your wisdom as we approach an election that will surely be contentious. Let us find ways to reach out in love while standing firm in our thoughtful, prayerful convictions. Hold us close and let us hold one another as safely as we can and with all of your love, amen. everyone my name is Kayla and welcome to Children's Circle. Today I thought it would be really fun for us to read a book together and this book is called The World Needs More Purple People. It's by Kristen Bell and Benjamin Hart. Let's go ahead and get started. The World Needs More Purple People. Hey kid I've got a secret it's gonna knock your socks off. I can't wait to share it with you. Ta-da! Follow my guide to become a purple person. How to Be a Purple Person by Penny. Now, you may be asking yourself, why in the world would I want to be purple? Purple is a magic color made when red and blue work together. I think all the best things in the world are purple. 
You're probably wondering, what does that have to do with people? Wow, are you a genius? Because you're already on your way to becoming a purple person. You wanna know why? Step one, ask really great questions. My dad says purple people ask great questions about everything, even questions about questions. Hey dad, how far is outer space? Have you ever met a dolphin? How many dolphins live in outer space? Purple questions are the kind that help you learn something really big about the world or something really small about another person. How tall is the world's tallest rainbow? What's your bear's name? Charlie? Dad says the more purple questions you ask, the more purple you become. How many do you think there are? He also says I can only ask him 20 questions about space dolphins per day. Step two, laugh a lot. My grandma says purple people laugh a lot. We are always laughing together. I mean like snot out our noses laughing. We laugh at books, we laugh at jokes. How do you make a tissue dance? Put a little boogie in it. We laugh at donkey dances and hairy elephant knees. And we especially laugh at grandpa's funny noises. Ha ha, ha ha ha. Purple laughing helps us remember the things we share and forget what we thought made us different. And it's almost impossible to be angry when you're laughing. Try it, I dare you. Grandma says the more purple laughing you do, the more purple you become. She also says grandpa's noises are her favorite funny noises in the whole wide world. Step three, use your voice and don't lose your voice. My mom says purple people use their voice and don't lose their voice. She encourages me to use my voice to sing. My dad is the one with the hairy chest who loves me more than all the rest. To give good ideas, let's wear monster costumes to school and share my opinions. I personally feel like we shouldn't have to eat Brussels sprouts because uh, they smell like sweaty socks. Sometimes people lose their voice and that's okay. It happens. A purple voice helps someone who's having trouble finding their own voice. Purple doesn't just speak up, they also listen. Maybe you could tell them you don't like it when they call you that name. Want me to help you tell them? Mom says, the more you use a purple voice, the more purple you become. Mom, can you help me with my play? She also says she heard my opinion on Brussels sprouts, but I still have to eat them. I'm going to work on a better argument. Step four, work hard, super duper hard. My grandpa says purple people know how to dig in and get stuff done. He and I like to work hard while we build things and while we learn things and while we grow things. Purple work is the kind of work that's done together to change something that needs changing. What do we want? More playgrounds. When do we want them? Now. Fix something that needs fixing or help someone who needs helping. Grandpa says the more purple work you do, the more purple you become. He also says no purple work has ever been done while sitting on your backside sipping strawberry lemonade. Okay, are you ready for the last step? Are you ready? Are you sure? Are you sure you're sure? Are you really, really ready? Okay, drum roll please. Paint yourself purple. Just kidding. That's not the way to become a purple person. Actually, being a purple person has nothing to do with what you look like. My teacher says purple people look all sorts of ways. They're big and small, old and young. Some wear cool coats and some wear shorts with lots of pockets and some wear funny hats. She says some purple fe people feel blue sometimes and red other times. And some purple people even have green hair. Step five, just be the real you. Like my teacher always says, purple people come in every color you can dream up, every size you can think of. The only way 
to be a purple is just to be you because you're the only you we've got. So these are my surefire steps to turning into a purple person. Hey, wait a minute. You ask really great questions. You laugh a lot. You use your voice all the time. You are a really hard worker and you are totally you. Well, I'll be a llama's mom. Mama, you've been beautifully purple this whole time. I'm glad you're a purple person because the world needs more purple people just like you. So God loves us no matter who we are. And God reminds us to love others. Being a purple person is being perfectly you. And there's no one better to show love to others. Let's go ahead and end this with a prayer. Dear God, help us to be purple people. Remind us to ask questions, laugh a lot, use our voices, work hard, and be ourselves so we can love others. Amen. Good morning and welcome to our virtual worship service. Thank you to all who are leading us in a meaningful worship experience. Aaron and Kayla, Zoe and Sophia, Steve and Michael. And I would like to extend a warm welcome to our guest preacher of the morning, Reverend Dr. Felix Villanueva. Reverend Felix is the UCC Conference Minister of the Southern California Nevada Conference to which we belong. And during this election year, as tensions escalate on both sides of the political aisle, Reverend Felix calls us to unity in the midst of diversity, reminding us that we need one another. The title of his message is One Wing Butterflies. Welcome, Felix. This morning, we also invite you to give to the Neighbors in Need, one of the four special offerings of the United Church of Christ. And here is a video from the UCC, which shares how this special offering supports our neighbors in need. How are the children who have no food to eat and no clean water to drink and nowhere to lay their heads in a country where none of this is scarce? How are the children? Freedom fighter Nelson Mandela is quoted as having said, there can be no keener revelation of a society soul than how it treats its children. The greeting from the tribe of Maasai still stands. Caesarea Angere, how are the children? For the well being of the children is a guide to the well being of our communities, the well being of our churches, the well being of our country indeed the well-being of this world. Neighbors in Need this year is all about the children, for our children are still not well. When we live in a nation where 18% of children live in poverty, the children are not well. Caesarea Angeri, how are our children? Neighbors in Need makes possible the work that you do on a local church level to improve the lives of our children. Through your generous donations, we are able to provide programming and resources for local churches who are on the ground level of providing support through food, shelter, mentoring, and more services than we can name to help sustain the joy and the viability of our country's most vulnerable citizens, our children. When you give, when I give, 
when we give together. Our collective efforts help support the work of the national setting in policy and advocacy work to the benefit of our children. When you give and I give and we give together, your dollars allow us to provide grants to organizations and to local churches who are making a difference in the life of our children. We owe it to them to leave them a world that is better than the world we received. We owe it to them to fight for their rights so that every child may be respected and loved for who they have been created to be. We owe it to them that they shall have food in their bellies and shelter and a place to lay their heads. We owe it to them that they should have health care, not just when they're sick, but so that they don't get sick. We owe it to our children. So I'm asking you to dig deep and to give to neighbors in need. For how we treat our neighbor says much about how we feel about God. And how we treat our children says much about how we will treat God. If you would like to give to the Neighbors in Need offering, we invite you to write a check to RUCC and to note Neighbors in Need in the memo section. Or you can give through your Realm account. Thank you for your generosity to the Neighbors in Need. Following worship, we will hold our Zoom Fellowship Hour. This Friday, the church will hold a trunk or treat at 6 p.m. for our children. Please wear a mask and maintain six feet of physical distance from one another. If you are interested in learning more about trunk or treat or attending, please contact Jenny. Next Sunday at 3 p.m., we will hold a drive-by shower of love, visiting those who are isolated or may need a bit of TLC. So if you are interested in participating in the drive-by shower of love, please meet in the church parking lot next Sunday at 3 p.m. with your cars decorated. Next Sunday at 5 p.m., we will be holding a Zoom new members class. And if you are interested in learning more about Redlands United Church of Christ or you are considering membership in this congregation, we invite you to attend that Zoom class entitled New Members. The only requirement for membership at RUCC is a covenant, either written or spoken. And speaking of the covenant process, I would like to invite Mary, the Vice President of the Board, to share why she covenants with RUCC. Why do I write a covenant each year? Simply put, I love our church. Here are just a few of many reasons I love RUCC. We are an open and affirming congregation. We embrace questions and doubts as part of our faith journey. We live the words we say so often, no matter who you are or where you are, on life's journey. You are welcome here. We build on the work and dedication of our founding members and many others. Let us, through our time, talents, resources, faithfulness, and vision, keep RUCC going and growing. 
This is my church home. It is my joy to covenant and be part of this faith community. Thank you, Mary. I am immensely grateful for Mary's love, dedication, and leadership. And now, as we move to the prayer concerns, I would like to remind you that at today at 2 p.m., we will hold the service of celebration for the life of Jane McCrory through Zoom. You can find that Zoom link in the view, and you can find that Zoom link on the RUCC Members and Friends Facebook page. That is today at 2 p.m. We lift up prayers for Betty, friend of Inez who is recuperating from surgery for a broken femur. We lift up Leah, friend of Sarah. We lift up Larry, family member of Sid, who is experiencing intense leg pain and is recovering from surgery. We lift up the family and friends of Lindsay, family member of Jennifer, who passed from life to life this past week. Lindsay is a mother of two, a 13-year-old and a six-year-old. And Connie requests prayers for her friend Heather, whose daughter Mallory has had numerous surgeries to remove a cancerous brain tumor and whose father passed from life to life. If you have any prayer concerns, I invite you to note those prayer concerns in the comment section below. Let us be a congregation at prayer, first entering into a time of silence. Creator of all seasons, we thank you for autumn, for the smiles on pumpkins that bring joy to the children, for Halloween costumes that spark imagination, for the coloring of trees that show the creativity of the divine artist for the fall harvest of pomegranates, apples, and butternut squash that bring us gratitude for our land. Creator of the seasons, as you transform the earth, transform us by your spirit. Transform us, we pray, into people of compassion, love, and peace. Oh God, some days we look at the world and all we see is chaos with arguing, fighting, injustice, judgment, finger pointing and distress. And we pray for transformation, transform us that we might be about transforming the world around us. From a place of hurt and heartache, may we create a sacred space of healing and hope. Just as you transform the earth, transform us by your spirit. It is in the name of the promise of hope that we pray. Praying, our God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry 
everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to our God in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to our God in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, burdened with a load of care? Precious Saviour, still our refuge, take it to our God in prayer. Do your friends despise, forsake you, take it to our God in prayer. Jesus' arms will take and shield you. You will find a solace there. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 21, verses 8 through 19. Hear it now. And the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of the slave woman shall not be heir with my son Isaac. And the thing was very displeasing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Be not displeased because of the lad and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah tells you, do as she tells you, for through Isaac shall your descendants be named. And I will make a nation of the son of the slave woman also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down over against him a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, Let me not look upon the death of this child. And as she sat over against him, the child lifted up his voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the skin with water and gave the lad a drink. Here ends the reading. This might sound strange to you, but I love the Old Testament stories. 
when I read those stories, I imagine sitting around the fire and listening to the wisdom and message of God's presence in the lives of God's people. Even more fascinating for, to me is the fact that there are stories in the Hebrew scriptures that sometimes I wonder how those stories made it in to the canon. Take the story of Hagar and Ishmael, for example. When we look at this story, all of a sudden, Abraham and Sarah don't look as the heroes of faith we have come to know from Sunday school. As a matter of fact, it seems as, they, as if they are involved in a plot filled with injustice and wrong choices. First, Sarah's jealousy leads her to convince Abraham to abandon Hagar and their son Ishmael. By the way, the story also seems to indicate that Abraham and Ishmael were quite close before all this took place. And let us not forget that it was Sarah who persuaded Abraham to sleep with Hagar in the first place. But this is not all Sarah's fault. Abraham, as the head of, of this household, also had a choice, but refused to reassert or assert his leadership in this matter. There is an interesting detail in this story. Not once, not once, Sarah refers to Hagar and Ishmael by name. The truth of the, of the matter is that it is very easy to objectify people. When I refer to other human beings as the other, rather than calling them by name, it is very easy for me to discriminate, dehumanize, and to attack. We see and maybe participate on this every day. Talk about those rioters, those Black Lives Matter people, those policemen, the undocumented, those right-wing Republicans, those left-wing Democrats, and the list goes on and on. Faceless and nameless people. We can easily demonstrate our anger and prejudices against them. It is much more difficult, however, when we know them by name and know their stories. But we don't really know Sarah's motives in getting rid of Hagar and Ishmael. But one thing is for sure, whatever her motives, Sarah acted selfishly and for a moment, she forgot who God was. As we move forward in the story, Hagar is in the desert. The water given to her by Abraham is gone and Ishmael is so weak that he could barely walk. In an act of desperate resignation, Sarah leaves Ishmael under a bush and moves far away from him so she could avoid listening to his cry as he slowly died. This is when Hagar calls to God and when God shows up. Can you believe it? Hagar calls and God answers. The first thing we notice is that opposite to Sarah's behavior, God's angel calls both Hagar and Ishmael by name. God's angel tells Hagar that God has heard Ishmael cry. Then the angel of God proceeds to do something totally outrageous. He makes a promise to Hagar that Ishmael will be blessed as the father of many nations. Did you catch that? This is a detail that many Christians tend to overlook. God gives Ishmael the same promise God gave Isaac. Let me repeat that. God gives Ishmael the same promise that God gave Isaac. So wait a minute. 
I, I learned in Sunday school that Isaac's descendants were the Israelites, God's people. They were blessed because God blessed Isaac and his descendants. But this is why I love the stories in the Bible. They often show us how many times we miss the point when we read it. In the story, God gave exactly the same blessing to Isaac, the father of the people of Israel, as to Ishmael, the father of the Muslim people. Both Muslims and Jews are children of the promise. But don't get upset with me by saying that. You can read it for yourselves. It's right here in this story. And this is what I love about God. God is constantly shattering our preconceived notions of who God is, of who is in, and of who is out. When, when we think we have God all figured out, we run into stories like this one, and we are left to wonder, what the heck? 75 years later, after this event took place, Ishmael and Isaac reunite for their father's funeral. By then, the promise made to Ishmael was way on its way to being fulfilled. So I love Old Testament stories almost as much as I love butterflies. <laughs> You're going to say, where is he going with this? Well, just hang in there with it. Butterflies, colors, and movement fascinate me. I can spend hours just watching them flickering their wings in the sun. I have seen many more butterflies. I once had the opportunity to look through the butterfly vault at the Smithsonian Institute. This is the vault where they regularly swap the collections in the main exhibition. I was amazed at the variety and beauty of these creatures. One thing I didn't see, however, was, or, 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 or I haven't seen anywhere else, but as a matter of fact, are butterflies with only one wing. Butterflies require two wings to really be a butterfly. I would like to think of humanity as butterflies and each one of us as one of their two wings. We need each other in order to be whole and complete. We need each other in order to fly and in order to reflect God's beauty through the sun rays. We need each other in order to save a world and a country that have forgotten that we are wings of the same butterfly. We have forgotten that the core of the Christian gospel is unconditional love. Maybe we need to expand our minds to accommodate more than we think is right. Maybe there are others, not from our circle, who are also spreading God's love around. Do you remember the story in the New Testament? The disciples come to Jesus to complain about the fact that there are other people not in Jesus' inner circle who are casting demons in Jesus' name. Jesus turns around and rebukes his disciples for being so short-sighted. We are all children of the promise. If left to our own devices, we, the church, can become divisive and our religion can become that which separates us rather than that, than that which binds us together. Maybe Christians can learn from Buddhists about the need of peace. Maybe liberals can learn from evangelicals about inviting people into the presence of God. Maybe the Northern Hemisphere can learn from our neighbors in the Southern Hemisphere about the power of hope. We are united because God unites us. Even when we make every effort to bring division among ourselves. 
sometimes like Sarah and the disciples of Jesus, we forget that God is still in charge. We are united by the cross, which binds together suffering people everywhere and infuses the spirit of resurrection. United by grace, which flows from, to us freely from the love of God, whether any of us deserve it or not. Sarah and Hagar, Isaac and Ishmael, Christians and Muslims, Democrats and Republicans. We are two wings of the same butterfly. My prayer is that we come to realize that because until that happens, we will continue to miss God's voice and purpose for our lives. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, take these gifts as an offering to you for the work that you would have us do in the world. Let us use it prayerfully and thoughtfully.
only for you. Amen. Take my gifts and let me love you, God, who first of all loved me, gave me light and food and shelter, gave me life and set me free. Now because your love has taught me, I have love to give away. Now the bread of love is rising, loaves of love to multiply. Take the fruit that I have gathered from the tree your spirit sowed. Harvest of your own compassion juice that makes the wine of God. Spiced with humor, laced with laughter, flavor of the Jesus life. Take a risk and new adventure, taste and zest beyond belief. Take whatever I can offer, gifts that I have Skills that I am slow to sharpen, talents of the hand and mind. Things made beautiful for others in the place where I must be. Take my gifts and let me love you, God who first of all loved me. The title of that hymn was Take My Gifts, and I am grateful for the gifts that you share with our faith community. And I am grateful for the gift of art shared by our mystery artist. And here are this week's drawings by the mystery artist. Welcome, Katerina, and welcome, Charletta. It is so good to have you in worship this morning, and a huge thank you to our mystery artist. And now, as you go forth to be a blessing, may you be blessed by the infinite love of the Creator, the amazing grace of Christ Jesus, and the deep peace of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen.